Hi everyone, welcome back to my kitchen where just about everything is scratch made and home preserved. I'm Jenny and today I just wanted to share with you some of my favorite budget friendly meals. These are very cheap eats, inexpensive to make and I'm pulling right from my pantry shelves for the most part using a lot of my home canned chicken, pork and beef. However, I am going to start out with a couple of cheap breakfast items. I've got one and a half cups of cornmeal, one half a cup of all-purpose flour, two tablespoons of granulated sugar. If you don't, don't like the sugar in yours, feel free to leave it out. One teaspoon of baking soda, half a teaspoon of salt. I'm just going to stir this together, or whisk, whisk it all. Here's a quick tip. If you've got those little cornbread jiffy mixes in your cupboard, use those. I'm putting in two cups of buttermilk. Two tablespoons of melted butter. I got that a little hot. I gotta mix that in before I put the eggs in. Cool it down. Two eggs. Two eggs. You're gonna wanna let your batter sit and rest for about 10 minutes so it gets just a smidge thicker before putting it in your pan. And then just make them the size you want. Make sure you have a little bit of oil in your pan unless you got a non-stick surface. And let it do its thing. So yummy. All right, and here they are. They are done. This is my son's. He just eats butter and syrup on his. I, on the other hand, eat mine with peanut butter. Um, I always have my entire life, I think because my grandpa did. <laughs> Corn cakes with peanut butter and a little syrup. Yum. Okay, so in my bowl, I forgot to turn my camera on. I keep doing that lately. I don't know what's going on with me. So in my bowl here, <laughs> I have two eggs, one half a cup of brown sugar, a teaspoon of vanilla, and a teaspoon of imitation maple extract, and a quarter cup of maple syrup. That is what is in here so far. I'm now going to put in one and a quarter cup of milk. Now, I do realize that sometimes milk is hard to come by right now with everything that we're going through. You can use regular milk, you can use almond milk, you can use cashew milk, um, the sh you know, the shelf stable almond milk, you can use, you can rehydrate powdered milk, um, you can use EVAP, and I would do half EVAP, half water, that way it's not too um, creamy. Whatever substitute for milk you have, you can use for this. If you have none, you could probably just get away with water. I have one quarter cup of butter melted. Ooh. Get that in there. All right, we're gonna add the oats. Now we need three cups of rolled oats. There's one, two, three. Next thing I'm putting in, I've got a half a tablespoon of um, baking powder. I've got a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. I'm putting in a rounded teaspoon of cinnamon. You can also, at this point, add ginger, clove, um, whatever kind of spices you like. You can use almond extract if you prefer almond extract. Okay, for the fruit, I have a rehydrated a half a cup of um, cranberries and raisins. I just put boiling water over them and let them sit for five minutes. And the reason I did that was because I didn't want my oatmeal bars to be dry when um, the raisins and cranberries suck up the moisture. Okay, once everything's stirred in really well, get yourself an eight by eight baker and get it greased really well. You can use spray, you can grease some flour, or you can use goop. I prefer the goop. I have some chopped pecans. I'm just gonna toss them on the top. 
And I'm probably using about a half a cup. You can also sprinkle on some granola. I, mean, I always have a jar of homemade granola that I keep in my cupboard. And the half a cup of homemade granola sprinkled over the top is really delicious as well. This is gonna go into a 350 degree oven for about 30 minutes. But kind of watch it, um, it'll get toasty on top. Just make sure that it's not jiggly and that it does set. It is out of the oven and it ended up taking 40 minutes as opposed to 30 because it's a little bit thicker in an eight by eight pan. So um, you'll have to just test it from 30 to 40 minutes. See how your oven does. And I had mine on convection and it took 40 minutes. I'm gonna freeze these for snacks and on the go breakfast bites real quick. And these are so freezer friendly. You can do them in large muffin pans, mini muffin pans. You know, if you're doing them for kids, um, bake them. Put them on a cookie sheet lined with um, some wax paper or parchment paper and freeze them and then pull them out and then you can toss them in a bag. And that is exactly what I am going to do with these. Look at those, full of raisins and dried cranberries. So delicious. And now we move on to lunch dinner recipes. This first one are easy mock cheesesteak sandwiches. Um, I don't know if you want to call them Italian beef cheesesteak, whatever you like to call them. They're delicious. They're kind of an easier mock-up version of them that I've made in the Instant Pot. And I also recently put out a canning video on how to can these up, and they are delicious. I will from now on always keep them on my shelf. I will, leave the, I will link the canning recipe in the description box below for you if you are interested. The ground beef and Italian sausage are from my freezer. Um, we are going to do it in the pressure canner and we are using ground beef and we are using uh, sweet Italian sausage. It's so good and it's so easy. This is a great potluck item and I'm going to do everything right in my instant pot. I'm going to do is turn on my saute mode and then as soon as this gets hot I'm going to go ahead and put in the ground beef and I'm going to add the Italian sausage. So I am going to do quite a bit here. I'm going to put four pounds of ground beef in here, two more, sausage, I'm not, I'm just doing the ground one, I'm not doing any casings, and I'm only using a pound. Um, you can use more than that, you can do half and half, which is what most people do. I like sweet Italian sausage in this, but I like just a little bit of that flavor with it. So that was probably a teaspoon and a half of garlic powder. And I'm gonna put about a teaspoon of onion powder. I'm not gonna salt the meat because of all the other stuff I'm gonna put in. I've got some fun, easy shortcuts here going in. Okay, this meat is mostly brown, so I'm gonna go ahead and put all of our flavorings in it. Here is one pack of lifted beefy onion soup mix. And I'm going to put in the second pack as well. And this is why I didn't add any salt to the meat because these are salty. So I used two packages of beefy onion. I'm going to use um, French dip, some au jus. I'm just using one packet. I have another packet I'm going to keep on the side. And I might make some for when the sandwiches are finished. I have chopped two green peppers. Now these are in large dice. I'm going to pressure cook this, so I wanted to make sure I leave everything large. And then I've got about three large onions here. Let's stir in this. Stir this together. Of beef consommé put those in and I'm just using just regular beef consomme and I'm going to put in one can of water and we'll see where we're at with one can of water we want this to have a a gravy with it actually that might be good so it's going to be kind of like the texture and consistency of sloppy joes I'm going to put in the rest of the water. So 
one full can of water, two cans of beef consomme. And I'm gonna put in a little bit of Worcestershire. So I want, yeah, two tablespoons of Worcestershire. And then I'm gonna leave that alone for the for seasonings. I'm not gonna put anything else in it. We're gonna cook it and then see where we're at when we're done cooking it. I have dehydrated mushrooms, probably my last few, but I'm gonna add some mushrooms in just because we like them. And I wanna do the dehydrated ones because they keep their shape a little bit. So I've got a good, maybe half a cup of dehydrated mushrooms. Actually, you know what, I'm just gonna use the rest. I'll have to do some more. These dehydrated mushrooms come in handy. And they're good because they keep their texture. So sometimes, you know, if you make uh, mushroom soup and you use fresh mushrooms and dehydrated, um, it's kind of a good mix. All right, we'll be back. Okay, our timer is done and this, I let the pressure out. I did the release valve and my little thing is down. So I'm gonna open it up. That smells so good. All right, I do have a lot of juice in here. I'm gonna thicken it. So I put about a quarter cup of cornstarch. I've turned off the saute mode, but it's gonna take a minute to come down. This is so good. It doesn't need any other seasoning. <laughs> okay, so here's our cheese stick completely finished. We just um, put provolone on the top and stuck it under the broiler. You could probably put it under the bottom too. It would melt just fine. How do you guys like it? It's delicious. Oh, yeah. I already finished it. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you can't film them yeah. eating. <laughs> it's yummy. Good. If you've got ground beef in the freezer, loose meat sandwiches are always a good idea because you can stretch them further and you can add more vegetables too to stretch the meat further. You saw I put in dehydrated mushrooms. You could also put in beans and stretch it even further. Okay, I have three quarters cup of warm water here and to this I am going to add one quarter cup of oil. I'm using canola oil. So I'm just kind of eyeballing it till it gets up to one quarter. And I need two tablespoons of sugar. This is a sweet bun filled with cheese. Okay, and then I am going to use one half a cup of sweetened condensed milk. Not evaporated milk, you need sweetened condensed. All right, I've got a little whisk here. I'm gonna whisk this together. And to this, yeast instant yeast you can either use two packages of instant yeast or you can use two and a half teaspoons of the instant active dry yeast i'm sorry four and a half teaspoons it's about two and a quarter teaspoons per packet so there's my four teaspoons of yeast and then here's my half this will equal two packets of yeast i'll give that a little mix real quick Okay, I'm just gonna let that sit for a few minutes. And after a few minutes, when this starts to bloom a little bit, then we'll put some, um, we'll put one egg in it. But let's get started on our flour mixture. We need three and a half cups of all-purpose flour. So this is my cup and a half measure. So there's a cup and a half. And here's a cup and a half, that makes three. And then I use my half a cup for sweet and condensed. So that's a quarter cup and my last quarter cup. Okay. One teaspoon of salt. I'm gonna add an egg to this. Mix this up. Try to do it left-handed to keep my hand out of your way. I'm going to put my hook on. Mix my salt in. Okay, 
On this low speed, I'm going to incorporate this. And I am going to mix this together. When this comes together, I will turn it on one click more and let it knead for about five minutes. And as you can see, the bowl is completely clean. It's nice and kneaded. So I am going to put some oil in this bowl. Let me first get it off of this thing. Does dough ever lock your bowl in there? My, it locks my bowl in even tighter sometimes. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna throw a cloth over it and I'm going to let it rise. I'm gonna stick this in way um <laughs> talk today. I'm going to put this in my oven um, with the light on for about an hour to let it rise. In this pan, I forgot to turn my camera on, I have one onion that I have put a tablespoon of canola oil in, um, one large onion, and then a half, um, half a small head of cabbage that I've sliced. And I'm going to cook these down for just a few minutes and then now this takes about a pound and a half of beef. I have two pounds here, so I'm just gonna cook it all together anyway. And whatever I don't use, I will repurpose into something else. And I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit more salt and pepper in here. So just salt and pepper to taste, whatever you like. Okay, it's mostly cooked down. Um, I'm gonna take the water out of here. Anytime you salt cabbage, the water comes out. So I am going to water out. Um, the beef doesn't have a lot of um, grease to it. It's really a light beef. So most of this is going to be from the cabbage. You can do them separately. I just don't because huh, that would take extra time, but you can. Sometimes, sometimes I do things in extra steps, but I try not to. <laughs> so if you want to avoid doing this step, you could certainly um, put your cabbage into uh, you know, a tablespoon or of oil and brown that first and then pull it out. And then do your onions and beef. And when you brown it, don't put your salt in it because the salt brings it out the water. This is mainly cooked, so I'm not gonna turn the heat back on. The beef's not fully cooked, but it's gonna cook in the bun. Um, but I'm gonna put some extra flavor in here. now. The original recipes for these don't have garlic powder or onion powder in them. They're basically, it's just salt and pepper. But you know me, I have to add some garlic powder. So that was a, a rounded teaspoon of garlic powder. Stop it. And a teaspoon of onion powder. And I am just going to toss in a little bit of Worcestershire, a little bit more pepper. You can flavor this any old way you want to. You know, you don't have to do anything completely traditional. Um, traditionally, this has American cheese in it also. And my husband does not like American cheese. He will eat it on a grilled cheese only, nothing else. So I can't put it in here. I will be putting cheddar. Whatever else you wanted to add to this, perfectly fine. In fact, this bun is so good, you could put any filling in it. You could skip the cabbage and just put barbecue sauce in this, and that would be good. Or barbecue pork. Um, gosh, any kind of filling would be good in here. Okay, now, I want to cut this into eight pieces. So... Each in half. You can weigh them if you want to make sure. I'm not that good. I eyeball it. Some of them might be bigger than others. Okay. Okay. There's my eight pieces. I'm going to take each piece and just kind of 
roll them into roll them into a, a ball. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Okay. I'll stretch it out more if I need to. But basically we're going to put these in a bowl. Oops. And put your cheese in, whatever cheese you want to use. I got a hole right there. I'm going to use a couple different ones. This one is <laughs> bacon cheddar. And then about three-fourths a cup of filling. So we just want to bring all the edges in and we want to make a nice bun here. Just pinch them. Oops, I got a hole there. I am going to put this right onto my cookie sheet. need to get like a smaller rolling pin too for these <laughs> smaller jobs. I just have this huge one for baking. Okay. Into my bowl. And I will do four with this smoky white cheddar. Three quarters cup of my filling. I've got them on a parchment lined cookie sheet. I am going to just give them a little, ooh, I'm going to give them a little cover. I'm going to put them back into my oven with the light on and let them sit for 20 minutes. <laughs> they look really good. I'm going to get these in the oven. Um, they are going to bake at 350 for about 20 minutes until they turn golden brown. So we'll see you when they're done. All right, these are nice and golden brown. I've pulled them out of the oven and I just buttered the tops. I'm waiting for them to cool off a little bit before we cut into them. So as soon as they're cooled off, we'll cut into them and see what they look like. I'm going to cut this in half. Sorry, I had to take a little break. Mm -hmm. Look how delicious that looks. Yum. Mm, this smells so good. It's starting to get a little dark in here, sorry. Oh, these smell so good. He's already eating his over there. Mm -mm -mm. These are so good and so easy to make. A little bit time consuming. Um, not all at once, but you know, making a dough, letting it rise, that you know, then browning everything. It comes together pretty quick though. Um, definitely worth it these are so good and you can put anything in here you don't have to stick to just beef and cabbage these are very cost effective to feed a bunch of people because you can fill them with anything and you can really stretch them out with beans vegetables whatever you want you can use an already cooked canned meat you just drain it really well so if you want to use your home canned chicken your home canned beef pork i have filled these with the pork the canned spicy or pork and spicy broth you can shred that up, mix in some barbecue sauce, and fill these buns with it. You don't really, you don't need cheese. You don't have to do that. You can throw in some onions, pickles, whatever you want. These buns are so good and very cost effective. And the dough is very forgiving. So if you are not good at making bread, these are a great starter for you if you would like to make your own. And like I said, cost effective because you're not going to buy buns. You're making your own. The next thing is... I've got a couple of vegetarian dishes for you. The first one is actually a canning recipe, but you can make it without canning it, and it is inexpensive, vegetarian, and delicious. 
This is a Greek tomato bean soup. And if you are interested, I will link the canning recipe or the canning video in the description box below for you. Beans. These are just these are just great northern beans. Now, this recipe usually you use cannellini beans, but I couldn't find them dry at my store. Um, so I'm just using the um, great northern white bean. You could use navy beans as well. Um, I did soak mine overnight. I do realize that they're going to be pressure canned so that they might be a little bit mushier, but these are going in a soup, and I don't necessarily want my beans hard in my soup anyway, so um, I'm gonna, I did go ahead and soak them overnight. I'm going to now rinse them. Okay, I'm gonna let these sit here while we prep the rest of our things. Shoot, I thought my camera was on. <laughs> I do that a lot lately. Um, so I've got three tomatoes in here, and I've just scored the bottom, the X, with a paring knife um, so that I can peel my tomatoes more easily. Um, so just like if you're canning tomatoes and you're taking all the peels off. I'm going to do nine cups of um, water <clears throat> just to be on the safe side. I'm going to put a little tiny bit in, get my burner on. And that's just so I can get this tomato paste mixed up a little bit easier. So one can of tomato paste. As soon as I get this melted down, I'll put the rest of the water in. Now, in the Greek recipes, they just use water. Um, they don't use any broth. I am going to put chicken bouillon in here, of course. Or you can use any broth that you've canned, any stock that you've canned if you'd like to. First four cups. This makes eight cups. Also, I want to say, whatever's left over, I'm going to make, this is what's for dinner tonight. Okay, my last cup of water. I'm going to put in two tablespoons of the powdered chicken broth. Powdered chicken bouillon, I should say. And we'll start from here. I'm also going to put some oregano in. <clears throat> so I've got some dried oregano. And I'm going to put in about a half a tablespoon. And about a half a tablespoon of parsley. Okay, I'm going to let this come up to heat. We'll make sure we taste our broth before we can it up because I need to make sure there's enough salt in it. Okay, get this out of the way. I have a little bag here for my peels. Peel, de seed, and chop your tomatoes. And then, if you're not canning this, go ahead and put them into the pot with the tomato broth, and then put your beans in that pot as well to cook. So I'm going to use probably, that's a, this is a half cup measure, three quarters of a cup of beans in each jar. When just making a pot of this soup, just use one one pound bag of beans. Make sure that you sort through them, soak them overnight, rinse them, and then instead of putting them into your jars, you're just going to put them into the pot. Okay, now I've got tomatoes. Um, I have no idea how many tomatoes are going to go in each because I've got kind of all chopped together. So, a good handful. Tomatoes are in. I've got four carrots here. Just going to slice those. I have kind of a 
small kitchen space to work. Okay, so <clears throat> again, instead of filling jars, if you're not canning this, just use this same recipe, but apply it to your pot. So I would saute the garlic and onions in a little bit of butter and then add the broth and or and then add tomato paste, toast it, and then add the water, the bouillon, and all of it, the rest of the vegetables. Um, so in all, it's, it's basically going to take 21 cups of water or broth and a tablespoon of chicken bouillon for every um, <clears throat> four cups of water. Okay. So the last one is nice and hot here. And I need a towel. My pan is getting hot. I love the smell of oregano. Oh my gosh. It's one of my very favorite herbs. <sighs> oh, and I did add another tablespoon of um, tomato paste. And more oregano, like a teaspoon of oregano and a teaspoon of um, parsley. So the last one was four cups of water. Anyway, I'm just going to confuse you by telling you. <laughs> you know what? I will put, even though it's a rebel canning and I wasn't going to put the recipe, because I've made it so confusing having to put more, um, <clears throat> make more broth, I'll tell you exactly what I used. And then you can decide from there if that's, something that you want to make. All my jars are in the hot tub. Okay, they are out and they are beautiful. And they are still bubbling away. Okay, and here is the soup. I forgot to show you when I dished it up. <clears throat> so this is in the container ready to go in the fridge, but this is the soup that I made for dinner tonight. Um, same thing that is there in the jars. This soup is pretty inexpensive using dried beans. Um, or if you've already canned those beans and they're already ready, you can use already canned beans. You can use already canned carrots if you didn't have any fresh carrots. Or if you're pulling things from your garden or freezer. Those are all great ideas, but it can be made up pretty easy and very inexpensive. And boy, this soup is delicious. This next one is a classic southern dish. Super inexpensive and great it's a great summer recipe. You can pull the tomatoes fresh out of your garden and make up some tomato gravy. You can have it over biscuits, you can have it over toast, whatever you like. Biscuits in the oven, some homemade buttermilk biscuits. I am going to show you how I make tomato gravy. So I have got my pan on a medium heat. I'm going to heat this up and I'm going to be making tomato gravy with my home canned crushed tomatoes. I canned these last year and I love my home canned tomatoes. So here's how I make my tomato gravy. I know every family probably has their own secret recipe of tomato gravy. <laughs> I am putting in here three tablespoons of bacon grease. And let me just tell you, I keep bacon grease in a jar. Now, I, I use a lot of bacon grease. I use this for everything. So I never manage to get more than a jar this size because I use it so often. But this works great for everything. I even make tortillas with this. Also gonna go ahead and put in my three tablespoons of flour. I am going to go ahead and cook this for about three minutes. Exactly how I like it. I add milk. Some people add water. I'm going to switch over to a whisk. I think it's better creamy than it is um, just adding water. 
Okay. What we have right here, basic white gravy, or brown gravy, I guess we could call it. I'm gonna throw in some pepper. Okay, here's my shocking secret weapon. I bet you wouldn't have guessed it. I'm putting in a teaspoon of this powdered chicken bouillon. Um, it makes a huge difference. So some of y'all are gonna be shocked. <laughs> That's okay. I like the flavor it lends to the gravy. Okay, I'm gonna open up my tomatoes. And I am going to put in the whole thing. And I'm gonna turn this down to a simmer. You can use regular canned tomatoes for this. You can use diced tomatoes. I used crushed tomatoes. Um, you can use whole tomatoes and crush them up with your hands when you put them in. Whatever you like to do, whatever kind of tomatoes you like. Um, you can use shortening for the fat. You can use butter for the fat. You can use oil for the fat. Um, I highly recommend bacon fat. I'm going to put a little more black pepper in. You can put as little or as much black pepper as you like. I mean, I've got this turned down to a low. I'm just gonna simmer this for a little while while my um, while my biscuits are in the oven and while I fry up a couple of eggs to go along with it. And of course, I'm gonna taste it for salt, make sure there's enough salt. This can be served with or without eggs. You can eat it for breakfast, you can eat it for lunch, or you can eat it for dinner. It is excellent. I'm gonna simmer this about 10 minutes on low. I add a half a teaspoon of salt and a half a teaspoon of onion powder. Now I add onion powder to all of my gravies, so kind of like chicken bouillon, huh? <laughs> but it gives your tomato gravy a good flavor. I know a lot of people just do t the tomatoes and then uh, no seasoning other than salt and pepper, but the little bit of chicken bouillon and a little bit of onion powder makes a huge difference. You're gonna love this. And my tomato gravy is done. My biscuits are out in the, of the oven. I kind of broke it when I cut it. Um, but these, this, if you're interested in my buttermilk biscuit recipe, it's already on my website. This is the one I make all the time. And I'm just gonna put some of this delicious tomato gravy over it. And I like it over my eggs too. Creamy, delicious tomato gravy. And this one has flavor. Some delicious changes you can make to this gravy using smoked tomatoes. Sometimes I smoke my tomatoes before I can them. Oh my gosh, such an excellent flavor. It's not super smoky, but you get the hint of smoke in there. This gravy with the smoked tomatoes is delicious. I would have used smoked tomatoes had I had any left, but I eat them quick. Sometimes I like to put a Southwestern spin on this and I'll add some green chilies or some hatch peppers just diced up along with it. So good. If you want, you can saute an onion and add it with those peppers. You could do some red bell pepper, green bell pepper, um, some jalapeno, make it spicy. You could throw yourself in some hot sauce. You can make tons of changes to this. It's such a good gravy. I like it just kind of plain like this, but with smoked tomatoes is my favorite way. You can serve this over biscuits, such as I did, or sometimes I'm just in the mood for a slice of toast and I put my slice of toast down, I put my fried egg on top, and then I spoon this gravy over top. I love that as well. You can also throw you some cheddar cheese on top after that, it's delicious. You can serve this over chicken fried steak. You could serve it over fried chicken. This is good with rice, it's good with pasta, it's good over potatoes. Oh my gosh, I love this over potatoes. So there you go. Another use for your home canned tomatoes. Next up we have a meatless roasted cauliflower soup. It is so good and again, one of my favorites. I probably say that about everything I make. It sucks when you like your own cooking this much because it shows. I have my oven heated to 425 degrees. 
I have one head of garlic. I just cut the top off of it. I'm going to leave that there. I have two heads of um, cauliflower and one of them kind of froze a little bit. I don't care. I'm still using it. <laughs> My fridge outside's getting kind of wonky and it gets too cold in the bottom. Okay, so I've got that. I've got one onion and I have just chopped this one onion and it's just a plain yellow onion. I have a couple sprigs of fresh thyme. I'm just gonna put those right in. So I've got my thyme, my garlic. Oh, and there's my timer. I have one fresh sage leaf. Sage gets really strong, so I don't like to use a lot of it. It will overpower my cauliflower. But you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna um, chop this up real quick. And I'm just gonna sprinkle it in. Um, if you like, if you really like the taste of sage a lot, you can definitely use more. I am going to put some salt. I am going to put some fresh cracked black pepper. If you like any other seasonings, you could totally put it in at this point. I'm, I've got just some regular old olive oil. Make sure I get it in there. Okay. I'm just gonna toss these really good so that I know they're completely covered. Okay, into the oven to roast. I'm gonna roast them for 15 minutes. We'll check them, see what they look like. Um, I'll stir them up in 15 minutes and then if they need to go back in for more roasting, which they probably will, I'll put them back in until they're nice and roasted. I just wanna stir these up a little bit. Little pieces are starting to roast. Garlic's looking good, yum. Roasting the garlic, or ro <laughs> roasting the garlic and roasting the um, cauliflower before you turn it into soup is nice because you get so much extra added flavor from roasting. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and get these back into the oven and I'm gonna roast these for about 15 more minutes. I think 30 minutes in all. Okay, these are done. Let's turn them into a soup. I actually want to take the garlic off. I need to squeeze that in. Everything else I'm going to put in here. Um, the thyme, as soon as this cooks for a few minutes, when before I blend it, I'll pull the thyme sticks out. The woody part of the thyme. cups of water you can use chicken broth you can use vegetable broth you can use mushroom broth I'm gonna go ahead and add in some chicken bouillon probably two two teaspoons of chicken bouillon I'm gonna bring this up to a boil I want to cook it the rest of the way in here so I'm gonna bring this up to a boil and then I'm gonna turn it down and let it kind of simmer on you a medium heat for about 15 minutes. We're gonna blend it and then we're gonna be ready to go. I forgot my roasted garlic. I gotta put that in too. You can turn these over and you can squeeze it like it. You can squeeze it right in, um, but sometimes that gets super messy and it leaves some of my garlic in. I actually just take the sharp end of a knife and pull them out. And I've been roasting garlic like this for many years. If you turn around and scrunch it, you're gonna leave some of that leftover garlic in there. Okay, on with the original plan. Let's get this cooking. And these are already getting soft from roasting it in the oven, but ooh, it's a nice golden brown roasty flavor. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on and I wanna blend it. And I'm gonna blend it for a few minutes until everything is completely smooth. 
Okay, I am pouring it back into the pan. I'm gonna turn my heat back on. I'm adding heavy cream. And then I'm gonna taste it for salt. I know it's gonna need salt. Oh yum. I am going to throw in some salt. I'm gonna put in some more black pepper. And then I like to finish it off with butter. You can finish it off with olive oil if you prefer olive oil. You could drizzle the olive oil in, whatever you wanna do. Okay, at this point, you could stir in some cheese. Um, a good cheese would be um, a smoked Gouda or just a Gouda cheese. A Havarti cheese would be really good in here. Um, Swiss would be good in here. Parmesan would be good. A white cheddar. Okay, in mine, I have some garlic, some buttery garlic croutons. You can use packaged or homemade. I have a little bit of sour cream and I have Parmesan. You could totally uh, stir in some cream cheese into this instead of heavy cream. That would be really good. You could serve these with little oyster crackers. You could um, swirl in some additional crema or you could do um, pesto, like a red pesto or a green pesto. You could swirl a little bit of it in. Oh my gosh, that would be delicious. Meatless meals really do save money on your budget. Also, I realize dairy products can be expensive. You do not have to put heavy cream or cheese into your soups. You could leave them as is and they are just as delicious. I've got another meatless option for you with a mushroom stroganoff that is so delicious. You're not gonna miss the meat. Tablespoon of butter in my pan. When I write this recipe for you, I'm gonna write it for the full amount for you know to feed for a family of four. Um, but today I'm just gonna make a tiny bit because I'm the only one home. And uh, I probably, well, what am I talking about? Even though I'm making a tiny amount, there'll be leftovers. So I'm sure um, when Robert gets home, he'll want to eat it for dinner. <laughs> I am just going to, this is half of a small onion, but you're going to want a whole onion for a larger, to feed a larger family. I don't know, there's a lot of you like me that are empty nesters. <laughs> I'm gonna put a little bit of salt and pepper in my onions, season them while I'm cooking them. I'm just gonna cook these for about five minutes on a medium heat. I don't wanna caramelize them, I just want to get them a little bit translucent. They're starting to get a little bit translucent. I'm gonna put in one cup of water. I may add a little bit of pasta sauce. Um, in a little bit. I'm gonna use um, the beef bouillon powder by Knorr. And then I have um, mushrooms. So these are my home dried mushrooms. You can use your home dehydrated mushrooms if you want. You could use your freeze dried mushrooms from your stash. So the light's so bright you can't see it. These are Thrive Mushrooms. Thrive makes a really good product. Uh, my link is in the description box if you're interested in keeping those things on your shelf as well. You can also use fresh mushrooms. I'm gonna put in my dried mushrooms. I love my home dried mushrooms. These are my favorite because they kind of um, retain a meaty texture and I'm waiting for my water to come to a boil for my pasta. Otherwise, I probably would have just thrown some pasta water in here to put in with the beef bouillon. My Mushroom Powder Plus. I, have, I, I just made this in my Dry Mixes number three video with the salts. This is so good, I love it. This is not just mushroom powder. It actually has a bunch of seasonings in it as well. I'm completely in love with it, so I am going to put a good tablespoon in there. And it will make it very mushroomy. I will put that link in the description box below for you as well if you haven't seen it. It's 
kind of nice having all these ready-made things on hand to whip up a meatless Monday meal in a pinch. Okay, I'm going to turn this on low and I'm just going to let this simmer. If I need to add a little bit more water to it, I will because um, it'll concentrate a little bit as it simmers out. But I'm going to wait for my pasta to get done and then we're just going to toss the pasta in with this. You can thicken it up if you like. I don't usually do that. I leave it just like this. I'm going to throw in some sour cream and it'll be ready. You know what? For some extra nutrition, I have decided, and since I have it sitting here, I just did a video on dehydrated spinach for you. This is my dehydrated spinach. Since it's just me, I'm going to go ahead and throw in a little bit of spinach because it's delicious. Spinach doesn't normally go in stroganoff, but I love it. And I like to use what I have. So mushrooms and spinach. Mushrooms are very full of vitamin K. It's actually one of the only things that you eat that does contain vitamin K that you can get a good amount of it in. And then of course spinach is a super green. Okay, I'm gonna let that simmer. Okay, the last minute I decided to add a little bit of cornstarch to it. So I got like a tablespoon. Just to thicken it up a little bit because I'm going to be adding some um, sour cream. Okay, so it's more like a gravy. This is so good and the only seasoning I used really was a little salt and pepper and the mushroom powder. Alright, I'm going to leave that on warm and wait for my noodles. Okay, my noodles are done. I am going to add a couple dashes of Worcestershire because I love it. So I'm going to put that in. And this is a little bit thick, which is kind of fine because I'm going to add my pasta directly in it. And I figure it's going to water it down a little bit. So, And I'm going to stir it in. You can add some parsley to this. Since I added spinach, I'm not going to add parsley, but had I not added um, spinach, I would add a little bit of parsley because you want that little pop of green in there. I'm going to add a smidge of my pasta water. Save your pasta water. I am using regular dairy sour cream, but for shelf stability, if you didn't have it, um, Thrive does offer a shelf-stable sour cream if you are interested. And it is good. I put it in uh, like the make-ahead meals. Okay, I'm just putting in a scoop because it's just me. I love stroganoff. Did I ever tell you that? It's like one of my go-tos. So a lot of times if I, if I have no idea what I want to make, and I'm terrible about this. I will pop open a jar of ground beef and pop it in the pan and make a little gravy. Put the noodles and sour cream in. Oh my gosh. I have actually made enough for two meals. This is about half of what I made. Oh, I love stroganoffs. <laughs> That is so good. The mushroom powder is such good flavor. My mushroom powder plus. Mm -hmm. The dried mushrooms keep a meaty texture, which I love. You can totally use fresh mushrooms, fresh onions, all fresh ingredients for this recipe, or you could use dried up to you. Also, you can sprinkle on some Parmesan cheese. I have some fresh grated. Oh yeah. Even better. All right. It's dinner time. I'm going to eat. I really love this mushroom stroganoff recipe because I used all pantry ingredients or you can use all pantry ingredients with using your dried mushroom stash if you have them. I have them both freeze dried and I dry them myself. 
I prefer to use the dried ones in this recipe because they do have a meaty texture and retain their shape. Um, you can use the dairy products if you have them. If you don't, it's okay. Next up, we've got to throw in a meatless taco Tuesday recipe. These are two of my very favorite tacos, even when I have canned taco meat up in my pantry, I still want bean tacos and potato tacos. Those two are actually my favorite tacos. And here I'm going to show you them fried, but these are super inexpensive. Make your own tortillas. This well, You can feed a crowd with just pennies. Um, so I have little tortillas and I have leftover mashed potatoes. A leftover mashed potato tacos are the best. <laughs> it is actually one of my favorite tacos. I prefer bean and potato over any other taco. I would take it any day. Okay, so I have my potatoes in there. I'm gonna put um, onions in there already. You don't have to do this if you don't want onions. You could do green onions, you could do red onions, whatever you want. So I'm just gonna leave my potato taco like that. I'll do two air fryer potato tacos. This one, I won't put onions in. I'll just put them in the one. I'm not going to season it. You can also, if you prefer, mix taco seasoning into those potatoes or whatever herbs you like in your tacos. You can put those in. I'm going to go ahead and just put a little bit of oil if you want to spray it on there. Whatever you like to do for your air fryer. And then, since most of you have basket air fryers, I'm going to go ahead and put my Oops, put my tacos in the basket air fryer. And I'm gonna go ahead and put this in. I don't know how long these are gonna take in, in there because I usually fry these. Let's try eight minutes. Over here I've got my heat going. I'm gonna fry them. Next, here's my potato taco. I'm gonna fry it. Make sure my grease is ready. You want your grease hot because otherwise it'll just absorb it. Doesn't take long. Potato taco done. After this, you can put in cheese. It is windy out there today. <laughs> you can put cheese in, whatever kind you like. Lettuce. Tomato. salsa you could do um, any taco sauce you like but that is the fried potato taco I'm so close to you you probably can't even see it I'm still getting used to this super delicious you can also lay your tacos out and just cover them with the onions the lettuce the tomato and eat it like that here's my air fryer tacos looks like the wind blew open <laughs> So now we can fill these with whatever toppings we want or we can just lay them out on the tray and put the toppings over top. Leftover refried beans. You're going to want your refried beans cold for this. Okay, going into the heat. You can fry them like I did or you can air fry those. You can also just eat them with a flour tortilla. Um, just heat it up you don't have to fry them or air fry them but they're so good oh my gosh I love those potato or bean tacos plain is my favorite taco I prefer them over any meat taco any day next up I have a very low fat nutritious lunch option for you and it's all made from shelf stable ingredients Things you probably already have in your pantry because you've stocked up on them. Okay, I have my bowl here and my ingredients. This is gonna go super duper quick. I have one can of chickpeas. Um, if you're feeding a lot of people, you're gonna wanna use two. It's only me here today, so I'm just gonna use the one. I have a can of tomatoes. I'm gonna use about half of it since it's just me. If I were using two cans of chickpeas, I would use um, this whole container of tomatoes. Since we're sticking to the shelf stable, it is canned tomatoes. I'm gonna put a little of this um, tomato juice in here too. 
there we go because I am going to use some freeze-dried kale you can use um, dehydrated kale or um, spinach whatever you want to use I mean this is kind of really one of those no recipe recipes um, when I write this for you I'll put the full amount I'm just kind of doing half right now but I'll put the full amount for you and I'm just kind of crinkling these up a little bit so I use what a quarter cup of freeze-dried kale there I'm gonna stir this into the tomato juice to get it rehydrating and then I have freeze-dried onion again put whatever you want in here you could do uh, mushrooms you could do freeze-dried or dried zucchini a couple tablespoons of those this is kind of like a Italian salad but with chickpeas here's my can of tuna so I've got one can of tuna If you're feeding more people, you're gonna want two, two cans of tuna. But again, completely up to you. This is one of those, you know, use what you like, what your family likes flavors. Um, feel free to change them up. You don't have to ask me if you can sub things out. Two hard boiled eggs. This salad is so full of protein. My dogs are arguing. I'm putting it right into my uh, egg slicer just to make it easy on myself. But yes, this salad is so full of protein. Oh my goodness. And you can do it with so many different possibilities. If you wanted to use taco seasoning in here, a package of taco seasoning, or change the beans out and do black beans, or um, any kind of beans you like and by the way my tomato oops my tomatoes have basil and um, garlic in them so mine have my salad has more of an Italian flair I am now going to add some olive oil about a quarter cup I'm going to add about a quarter cup of red wine vinegar. Some black pepper. A little bit of salt. And then, since we're not using fresh ingredients, I'm going to put just a little bit of garlic powder in. You can let this sit and rehydrate on the countertop for about 10 minutes, or you can refrigerate it. This is even nice to make um, the day ahead, but it's super high in protein, delicious. My kale may not be fully hydrated or my onions, but I'm gonna take a bite. I love the little bit of vinegar in here. It's so good. About 17 years ago, I was working um, here in Scottsdale and one of our lunches was catered and it was from some place that made this salad and I fell in love with it then so I've been making it ever since. You can also switch it up by adding a tablespoon of pesto into it. Um, maybe instead of red wine vinegar if you don't like it, apple cider vinegar or you could use uh, bottled lemon juice. You could use um, Dijon mustard in here. Um, whatever you want. That's the nice thing about salads and anything with beans bean recipes in general I think all right so I just made a small amount for myself because it's lunchtime so I'm gonna use my egg bowl here and I am going to eat lunch okay that is one easy lunch and super delicious it's nice to do have a prep day at the beginning of the week and have some of those in small containers ready to go. Next up, I've got some soups because soup is cheap and can feed a lot of people. First one up is turkey meatball soup. I'm going to put a tablespoon of butter in this pan. I have one large onion. 
You can use Thrive vegetables for this, or you can use your home canned vegetables. Um, you can use dehydrated onion, whatever you have on hand, frozen onion. Anything goes. So I'm going to saute this up for just a few minutes, and then we're going to add some garlic. Okay, I'm throwing in four stalks of celery. This is kind of like uh, my mom used to call this must-go soup when you've got stuff in your refrigerator that you need to use up and you toss it all in a soup because everything must go. <laughs> I am going to throw on top of this um, four garlic cloves or turkey balls. I've got three carrots. I'm going to peel and grate these. Okay, I added 12 cups of water. You can do uh, 12 cups of chicken broth if you've got it. And, or turkey broth. I should have used turkey broth, but that's okay. I'm going to put in two tablespoons of chicken bouillon. up to a boil and then I'm going to turn it down and let it simmer in the meantime we're going to make our meatballs and get them into the oven okay I have one pound of ground turkey here I am going to because this is lean I'm going to put some butter in here this is probably maybe a tablespoon maybe three quarters of a tablespoon I have two cloves of garlic I have some Tony's uh, Creole seasoning and I'm going to just pop some of this in here. Maybe a teaspoon. Yeah, maybe two teaspoons. I'm not going to give these that much flavor because the flavor is in the soup. You can put whatever flavorings you want in here. And then I have some saltine crackers because I have no breadcrumbs. And uh, I like saltine crackers. <laughs> So that's probably a good quarter of a cup. I'm gonna put an egg in here. I'm putting a tablespoon of half and half in there. You want <laughs> not raw meat, honey. This is raw meat. You want tiny turkey balls, so we only want them about this big for soup. Okay, here's our little pan of turkey meatballs. I just sprinkled a little bit more Tony's seasoning on it. I'm gonna stick this in a 350 degree oven for about 15 minutes. This is what our soup looks like so far. Um, I am gonna put in here half a cup of pasta. I don't want a ton of pasta, just a little bit, and that is orakete. Okay, this is going. I'm going to put in a little bit of spinach. This is probably maybe a cup um, of fat I spinach. I remember when there was videos on in our closet for our videos too. And then I've been eating You can put more spinach in there if you want. A lot. And then I'm going to put in half eating, and half. Do you know that I've been However much spinach in here, kale you want, but there is our turkey meatball and spinach soup. Yeah. Meatball soup is nice because it stretches your protein by mixing it with oats or breadcrumbs, extra vegetables, whatever you want to mix in with it. And soups are always inexpensive, so this is a great way to feed a crowd. My grandkids loved it. Next up we have another soup. This is a crock pot soup and I was just utilizing the kielbasa that I keep in the freezer. I buy it every time it's on sale for $1.99 or less. I'll buy it and I stock the freezer with it so I always have an abundance of kielbasa in the freezer. So this is one of those soups that I pulled from the freezer. I pulled the kielbasa from the freezer. I have my iron skillet heated up. I have it on low right now so I'm going to turn it to medium lowish and I am gonna put in a couple tablespoons of butter I'm 
um, one medium onion. This is just a yellow onion, brown onion, whatever you like to call them. And then I have one half a head of cabbage. And this is a medium head of cabbage. Chopped, rinsed. I just wanna give these a little bit of head start before I put them in the crock pot. I'm gonna give these a little bit of salt. And I'm gonna use my pepper grinder to put uh, pepper in, but I will blink it out for you since the sound annoys people and I don't want it in a container already already cracked. Um, I prefer to just do it like this. I'm just gonna cook those until they soften up. Okay, while that's going, I have one sausage. This is a uh, kielbasa. You can use smoked sausage for this, but I am only making a, crock, a small crock pot soup for two and there'll probably still be leftovers. So I, I'm using one sausage out of that pack. They come with two. Okay, so I'm just gonna chunk them up. I'm gonna put them right into this. Now, this is six cups of water with two um, of the bouillon cubes, and these are the Nor bouillon cubes. They're called it a pollo, so they have the vegetable oil in them. I'm gonna put those right in. My vegetables have cooked down a bit. I'm gonna go ahead and put those in. Throw in some parsley, about a teaspoon. I'm gonna throw in a teaspoon of garlic powder. Throw in a teaspoon of onion powder. Half a teaspoon of paprika. Depending on how strong your crock pot is, I'm gonna cook this on low for four hours and then I'm gonna add potatoes. If your crock pot is really strong, you're gonna wanna cook it on low. If your crock pot is kinda weak, you're gonna wanna cook it on high. So I'll see you in four hours. I am now adding my diced potato into this. And you can do two potatoes. This is actually one really large potato. So we'll go ahead and let this cook. Let this go another um, three hours this way. And then we're gonna go ahead and thicken it up and put in some cream and some cheese. Okay, I am going to thicken this and I am using heavy cream and ultra gel. And I've just made a slurry. You can thicken uh, with whatever you like. If you like to use um, cornstarch, use that. I like ultra gel because it kind of blends in a little bit better than cornstarch. And you can put it in anything hot or cold. You can even do it directly. You can also thicken this with sour cream and cornstarch. You can mix those two together and put those in there. The amount depends on how thick do you want it. I still want mine in a soup so it's a little bit thicker. So I used a quarter cup of Ultra Gel and um, it ended up being like a half a cup of um, heavy cream. And then I have a half a cup of Velveeta. And it is almost done. I'm gonna put the cover back on it and cook it for 30 more minutes um, just to make sure that it thickens up really well and that the Velveeta melts. Here is my soup. Oh my gosh, it's so good. So I put it in the bowl, cooled it off, and I was like, oh, I'll turn on the camera. Totally forgot about you after I started eating the soup. So I didn't add any extra flavoring. Um, you know, the cabbage and the kielbasa really flavor the broth, so. It is so good. I added nothing extra for flavoring, just an FYI. And I am having this with some homemade 
crackers. If you're interested in the homemade crackers, I'll link the video in the description box below if you haven't already watched it. It was my November. Anywho, gotta try this quick, easy soup in your crock pot. Evaporated milk works great in this recipe instead of heavy cream as well. I used heavy cream because I had it. I usually do, but not everybody stocks heavy cream. And I actually have cases and cases of that um, evaporated milk out in my pantry. So if you are like me and you stock up on that kind of stuff, use that. This is all about using what you have and creating dinners with things you have in your pantry, in your freezer, in your refrigerator using up odds and ends, all while making your meals budget friendly. Okay, we're now moving on to using up some of our canned meats. Up first is our canned home canned chicken. Here I'm actually poaching chicken breast because I had it in my refrigerator and I needed to use it up, but this is something that I would use my home canned chicken for instead. So skip this poaching step unless you too have chicken in your refrigerator that has to be used up. And just use a quart of home canned chicken or two pints because this is going to be a casserole. leaf time but my garden is dead and um, I don't have any dry time <laughs> so there you go you got some powdered thyme and then I'm gonna add a little bit of powdered oregano also because this is just the broth just a little bit I mean this is just poaching liquid so I'm not gonna overdo anything but just enough to give it flavor As soon as this water starts to heat up, everything will come through. But I'm gonna stick the top on here, keep it on low, and I am gonna let this go for you know, maybe 30, 45 minutes. Um, but I'll keep checking it, and as soon as these are done, we'll be back. Our chicken is done, and I pulled it out and let it cool for a few minutes, and then I just cut it into larger cubes. Um, you want your chicken salad to be a little bit chunky because it's the main dish. Um, in here, I've got about a cup of mayo, only because the, my chicken breasts were really big. Otherwise, I would have put about three quarters of a cup of mayo in here. In here, I'm going to put the zest of one lemon. I'm going to squeeze a half of lemon in here. Juice of half a lemon. Okay, I have got one medium onion and two stalks of celery. And I only sauteed them in the pan for about five minutes just because this is a cooked chicken salad and I didn't want to put the raw crunchy vegetables in there. I think it's a texture thing. If it were a, a cold chicken salad, I would be fine with it. But I always kind of cook them a smidge before I put them in that. And I just want to get all of this stuff into my mayo before I put in my chicken so I don't break it up. And then I've got about a third of a cup of almonds. This is kind of odds and ends. I have some sliced almonds in here. I only had about a tablespoon left. And then the other almonds were almonds that I toasted with some rosemary and olive oil. So I'm gonna put those in. And I'm gonna put in about a half a teaspoon of sea salt and some black pepper. You can put however much pepper in you want like it so I'm gonna put in a good amount. I'm just gonna put in here a teaspoon of Dijon. Ooh, that was loud. You can omit this if you like. I just really like Dijon. I think the original recipe does not have that in there so and it has slivered almonds not toasted almonds. You can put whatever kind of almonds you want. Um, if you have those smoked almonds that would be really good in here. I know people that put smoked almonds in their hot chicken salad. Okay, gonna put in 
all of our chicken. Again, I don't want, I didn't want to break it up, so I'm gonna stir this in carefully. Just gonna get this tossed in the meal. And then I'm also gonna add some cheddar cheese to this. And my chicken that I poached, I poached it pretty light. I um, pulled it out just before it was completely done so that when I bake it, it Motion won't get overcooked. Okay, I have one small bag. I think it's about two cups of cheddar in here. I don't know if I'm gonna add the whole thing. Let me stir this. Yeah. So I'm gonna add the whole thing. So this is two cups of shredded cheddar inside, and I'm gonna put more on top, but I'm gonna bake this for a little bit first. I have the baking dish already greased. I'm just gonna pour the chicken salad in. cover this with some tin foil and I'm going to stick it in a 375 degree oven um, for about 30 minutes just because I want the chicken to cook the rest of the way and then after that um, I'm going to pull it out and put the topping on so we'll be back when we're at that point okay our half an hour is done and our chicken salad is bubbling nicely in there and in here I have <laughs> about a cup and a half of crushed potato chips. These are plain potato chips. And I am gonna sprinkle these on the top. These get super crunchy. If you mix these with cheese, it's even crunchier. But I have cheese on the inside of the casserole, so I'm not gonna put it in the chips. And you don't have to use this many potato chips. You can do a cup or half a cup. Okay, so the potato chips are on, and I am going to, and oh, by the way, I just put them in this bag and ran a rolling pin over them. You don't even have to crush them completely up, or you can put them in the food processor if you want them really fine. But I'm going to put this back in the oven, and I'm going to bake it for another 15 minutes uncovered. Our hot chicken salad is out of the oven, and I did let it cool down just for about 10 minutes um, to stop the boiling on the inside <laughs> before we um, dug into it. So I'm just going to put some on them plate here. Oh, my, my potato chips are crunchy. So this is so good. You can actually serve this just alongside of some bread if you want, or if you want to be lower carb, you can serve it alongside of just a, some greens that are lightly dressed. So with this hot chicken salad, there are a lot of options. If you wanted to keep it more keto friendly instead of the potato chips, you could use pork rinds on the top. If you wanted to make it lower calorie, you could put less cheese and maybe substitute some of the mayo for a non-fat yogurt. Um, that would be good as well. You can also put different flavors in here. You can do a Spanish version instead of potato chips, use tortilla chips. And on the inside, you can add some green chilies and some jalapenos. That would be really yummy. And some tomatoes, that would be really good as well. Um, there are a lot of options you can do with this chicken salad. It is so good, you're gonna love it. Hot chicken salad is so good. That is something I used to eat once or twice a week, every week for years. I love it. And here's the thing. The potato chip topping. Every time I buy potato chips, and we don't eat a lot of potato chips, so I always have a little bit left in the bottom. No one ever will eat the crushed up chips in the bottom, right? I take them, smash them, and I pour them into a jar. And I just keep collecting them into that jar, and I use those for toppings. So you're utilizing everything. I do the same thing with pretzels and crackers. I always keep the crumbs because they are they make excellent toppers for anything. Next up, using canned chicken are my Thai lettuce peanut cups. Thai peanut lettuce cup. These are so good. My daughter asks for them 
a lot. I have a little nub of fresh ginger. I'm gonna go ahead and grate it right into my bowl. You're gonna need a microplane for this. If you don't have fresh ginger, you can use a couple teaspoons of powdered ginger. But fresh is so much better. It's getting down where I'm gonna grate my nail. That guy's done. You know what, I'll put him in a cup of tea later. Probably the end of this one too. I am going to do two cloves of garlic and I'll see if that's enough. I might put a third in there. I don't want a garlic paper in there. We'll see, you know I love my garlic. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Okay, garlic. Clove number two. Again, I'm gonna taste it, make sure there's enough garlic when I get done with it. Half a cup rice wine vinegar. One and a quarter cup of peanut butter. I'm using creamy peanut butter, but you can totally use crunchy if you prefer. Because I am going to be adding some chopped peanuts later. I am going to um, juice and zest two limes. And by the way, I'm making a kind of a double batch of this um, Thai peanut sauce because I'm gonna be using a whole quart jar, which is two pounds of chicken. And I want extra sauce for the tops of these. Okay, juicing the limes. I'm putting two teaspoons of sesame oil in here. You don't want to put any more than that. This stuff is strong. Quarter cup of soy sauce. And a quarter cup of honey. Of course, my honey's crystallized. Okay, I'm gonna squeeze it out. That's how you know it's real honey. If your honey isn't crystallizing, don't use it. Okay, that's good. Okay, so there's my quarter cup of honey. Okay, and then the best stuff on the planet. Sriracha. Four tablespoons-ish. That looks about right. Maybe one more for good measure. One more squirt. Okay, we're gonna stir all this together. Maybe. Okay. We needed a whisk. This smells so delicious. Oh man, it's fresh. Even though we're using our um, canned chicken, making it quick, there's no reason that we can't make good, delicious homemade food. And this is better than takeout. Way better than P.F. Chang's takeout, let me tell you. The flavors that are going to be going on in this dish. Mm-hmm. Okay, I need to make sure there's enough garlic and enough uh, ginger. Wow, that is a delicious sauce. Ginger's good. I'm going to add two more cloves of garlic. Putting them in at once, but it needs more garlic. And I'm gonna add just a smidge more soy sauce. I think I was a little scant on the corner, the quarter cup. 
Okay, we're gonna move on to the rest of it. Oops, sorry, you probably can't even see. Look at that gorgeous Thai sauce, Thai peanut sauce. Okay, we're gonna move on to get the rest of the stuff done. In this pan, I'm gonna get going on a, just a medium lowish heat. And I'm gonna put a little bit of butter in. Yep. You can do oil if you want. If you wanna put sesame oil in here, whatever you like, but I'm still kind of a butter tin whether I'm making Asian food or not. So I don't need that much though, just a little bit. That's about a tablespoon. You can use coconut oil, olive oil, whatever you like. I'm gonna go ahead and put my, I've got a half of an onion in here. This is about a medium sized onion. If you have a small yellow onion, you can use that. I'm gonna put a little bit of sea salt on there. A little bit of pepper. I'm gonna cook these for about three minutes and then I'm gonna add um, more garlic. I'm gonna add another, oh, two cloves of garlic in here. And then we're gonna add some carrot as well. Okay, I'm gonna put in my two cloves of garlic just cause I want to flavor my chicken. Anytime you're cooking, you wanna build flavor on flavor. You don't necessarily wanna muddy flavors up and you wanna keep some things separate, but you have to have flavor in them. Nothing worse than no flavor. That's the truth. So here is my ugly chicken. You can tell it's ugly chicken. You wanna know how? Look, I raw packed it and it kind of clumps up in the middle, but everything's super moist. And look at that clear broth around it, delicious. Not using the broth today, I'm gonna drain the broth off and put it in the refrigerator and use it for something else. That's ugly chicken. Yes, it is. Okay, I'm gonna pop my jar. You can hear that good seal. Another thing about ugly chicken, when you drain it, you don't even need a lid because ugly chicken won't come out. <laughs> it is literally clumped together. Ta -da! That's how I drain it. And I like it that way because it stays really moist and delicious. Okay, next, one carrot. I'm just gonna cook this for a sec before I put in my um, chicken. Because it really doesn't need a lot. And then we're gonna add um, about a cup of our peanut sauce that we made right into the chicken. Oh yeah. Flavor the whole thing. I just wanna get a little bit of heat on these carrots. And I am now going to break my chicken up a bit. This is a pretty quick, pretty easy. Even though you're, you're cutting up the fresh veg, it is so worth it because then you have something that's light, fresh, low carb. If you wanna leave the carrots and onions out of this to make it even more low carb, feel free. Or leave the honey out if you'd like to do that. Your kitchen, your rules. Any recipe I make is just, recipes are just kind of starters, right? Then you can switch them, change them to your own stuff you like to put in or take out. That is broken apart pretty good. I like to leave a couple little chunks in there. Okay, I am going to put about a cup of this sauce right in there. All right, and then when that sauce hits the hot pan, you can smell the garlic, the ginger, all that stuff coming through. Yum! She's and not I just saying that, I can smell it also. <laughs> And I've just got my pan on warm. I don't want to toast it up or anything. I'm just heating it through. All right, I'm gonna chop up my stuff. Oh, you know what else I want to put in? I for almost forgot. I have a jar of my home canned mango salsa. And I'm gonna use some of this in here because it has mangoes and red bell peppers. If you wanted to just chop up mangoes and red bell peppers and put them in here, you could totally do that. But I'm gonna use this jar of, actually, let's use the whole thing. 
because then you're going to get another dimension of flavor from this. And if you did not see this video, I will link it in the description box below. Not only is this stuff, this salsa good with fish and chips, but boy, you can do a lot of things with it. You want me to go get it for you? <laughs> Mm. There's a lot of flavor in there. I'm going to add a little bit of salt, though. Babe, that mango. Oh, mm -hmm. The mango salsa in there. And then when we build these on our lettuce, we're going to add some fresh Who um, needs the green That's onions. We're going to add some like that. basil. <laughs> and then we're going to add some uh, radishes for a little crunch. And some extra lime wedges. Oh, yeah. I'm going to turn off the heat and chop my veg. And here are my lettuce cups. I've taken a little lettuce leaf and put some of the chicken on it. And then I put some basil chiffonade, which is just basil sliced. I've got some sliced green onions, some radishes, and some limes, and some uh, chopped peanuts. And those are just, um, what are they? Dry roasted, lightly salted peanuts and a smidgen of tiger sauce. Do you guys know what tiger sauce is? If you like heat, you'll like the tiger sauce. And these, better than P.F. Chang's. Mmm, a heck of a lot more flavor. Those chicken lettuce cups, really, that recipe really makes a lot. It, you can use that as an appetizer for any party. You can use it for dinner. We eat it for dinner and it will feed four of us. They, those are so good and there's a few fresh ingredients in there but a lot of it is pantry staples also um, instead of fresh ginger you could use powdered ginger same thing with garlic but those are delicious with just a few added fresh ingredients pretty inexpensive the next recipe is also using my home canned chicken and this these are Greek chicken patties which are Fabulous. I absolutely love these. And I make them for parties. Small ones as appetizers. You can do that. You can make them for dinner. Um, we've had them for dinner several times along with a Greek salad. It's delicious. The first thing I've done is taken my one English cucumber. I actually took the peels off of it. Normally you don't peel the cucumber for this tzatziki sauce but I don't do well with peels. So I took all the peels off of it and I seeded it and then I grated it. It is just sitting in a little colander and I've salted it a little bit and I'm just gonna let it drain. So I'm gonna let it sit like this for about 15 minutes before I start making my sauce. Okay, so my camera completely shut up. I don't think it recorded this. I have two cups of Greek strained yogurt in here at 2%. I have one English cucumber that I have um, peeled seeded and grated and then I drained it with cheesecloth. I have a pinch of white pepper in here. I have a little bit, um, just a couple grates of sea salt and three garlic cloves. I'm just going to taste this really quick and see if it needs um, more salt. It does. <laughs> I'm going to put a little bit more white pepper in it too. It's good and garlicky though. It's another pinch of white pepper. I'm also going to add a teaspoon of white vinegar and about a tablespoon of olive oil. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and refrigerate this for about two hours before we make our chicken patties. All right, so I have an array of things that I'm going to be putting into these um, chicken patties. I'm gonna open up my chicken. All right, I'm first gonna put mayonnaise in. I am going to do half mayonnaise, half egg, because when I marinate meats or grill meats and I add the um, spices, it actually sticks better in the mayo and it, and it puts it all around the meat, so I really love that. So I'm going to put mayo in there. And I'm probably going to use, oh, maybe a half a cup of mayo. 
maybe not quite a half a cup, more like a third. And I'm going to go ahead and crack my eggs in. And I'm doing all this before I even put my meat in because I want to spread around my flavors. That goes in the bowl. I have three green onions. Hopefully this will be enough. Like I said, I've not made these before, so I didn't want to do the same flavors in both. So green onion going in there. And I have garlic. Where is the garlic? This is two cloves of garlic. I have three cloves in the tzatziki sauce, so that the tzatziki sauce will be pretty garlicky. So there's my... I still have garlic in there. Okay. So there's my two cloves of garlic. I have fresh oregano. Get some of the leaves off here. If you have dried oregano, you can totally use that. But I have a real thing for fresh oregano. I use it constantly. Oregano and tarragon and cilantro. Okay, I'm also going to put maybe the juice of half a lemon in here. I'll probably save the other half for the salad. Okay, and then I'm going to put in fresh cracked black pepper. A lot of it. Sea salt. I'm going to stir this up a little bit. Ooh, you know what else I wanted to put in here? Dijon. Okay, I'm going to put a tablespoon of Dijon. Just because Dijon makes everything better. I just want to break up the chicken here. Get everything stirred in. And I'm going to put breadcrumbs in for binder. Okay. Breadcrumbs. That's a what is going on today? <laughs> and that was about maybe quarter cup of breadcrumbs. I think I need a little bit more. So probably about a half a cup of breadcrumbs in all. Yeah, that's good. I hope these hold together with part mayo, so actually there's still some big chicken. Yeah, I think those are going to be good. All right, last thing I'm going to put in before we wrap it up, I'm going to put in some spinach and feta. And I'm going to cut up the spinach a little bit. I don't know that it's going to be my husband's favorite with some spinach, but I love spinach. And so is my daughter. Maybe he won't notice. I'll tell him it's a, an herb. <laughs> If you don't have fresh spinach, don't use it. This is still Greek with just having the lemon and oregano flavor. Garlic. I know you probably can't see me um, picking the stems off my spinach, but I'm going to chop my spinach pretty small. 
<laughs> and you know what? I think I might put one more egg into my bowl just to make sure it holds together because I'm putting this extra stuff in. Okay, there's my spinach. So that's probably about a half a cup of packed spinach that I'm putting in. But I do want to add one more egg. I just don't want it to fall apart when I'm cooking it. All right, so one more egg. And I'm going to stir this in and then get our last ingredient in. Oh man, these smell so good already. I cannot wait for dinner. Get these spread up. Okay, last ingredient. Feta cheese. I don't even know how much he put in. That was like a quarter cup of feta. It probably needs a little bit more. Add that salty flavor. This is going to make quite a few patties, which is fine with me. Then I can have lunch too. But I bet my daughter will eat too, my husband will eat too, I'll probably eat too. Uh, Samina will probably eat too. I created this recipe for the ugly chicken cook-off a couple of years ago and I will have to say since I created this recipe I have made these several times and a lot of times I do not put feta cheese in it just the dried I use dried spinach and herbs um, these are excellent you you can put the cheese in if you have it but you're not gonna miss it if you don't oh you know what also be good in here uh, sun-dried tomato I don't know why I didn't think of that. I should have put that in there. That would have been delicious. I'm trying not to make these too awful big. The bigger you make them, the easier they fall apart. Okay, I've got my pan on medium. I just turned it down a little bit, medium low. And I am putting coconut oil in here. I don't think it's hot enough yet. Nope. Oh, I've got the fan on. That's why. Now they're going. Let's hope they stay together. I'm going to try to fit four. Okay, I'm going to take these first four out. And I'm going to continue cooking these. And here they are. This is our little tzatziki sauce. And then I'm just doing a little side salad with a vinaigrette. Um, but they turned out really good. I haven't tried it yet, but uh, Robert says they're delicious. And delicious! He's, <laughs> he's on his third one. Well, he's on his third one and says they're delicious, so I'm just hoping there's enough flavor in here. But he says next time he eats them, he would like it on a bun. Mmm, those are good. Perfect. Mm-hmm. The mayonnaise keeps them really moist and holds the flavor of the lemon. I use <laughs> only half of a lemon. It's really lemony. Oh, it's a tzatziki sauce. Mm. Super delicious. This is something I would make again. I think I'd try other varieties too. I know this video is starting to get really long, but I still wanted to get a couple other ones in here. The next one I have is a southwest, southwest version of a corned beef hash. Beef. 
So I'm just using a pint of corned beef. This is for two people. But I'm going to use a quart of potatoes. <clears throat> I like mine more potato-y than beefy. And not to mention this will kind of break up and it kind of works out a little bit better. But you can use more beef than potato if that's the way you like it. These potatoes are actually canned with parsley and chicken broth. And I have a video on this and I know you're not supposed to do it, but I can slice potatoes only because I had them and I got a 25 pound bag of sliced potatoes for free so I canned them up sliced. And anyway, these work excellent fried. We're gonna get started. Got my big iron skillet, I'm gonna turn it on. Heat this up, pop on the top on my potatoes. And I'm gonna actually put these in a colander and drain them really well before I get them in a pan. I am using some coconut oil. <clears throat> you can use whatever you want, but I'm using coconut oil. Guess I need a fork for this. while you're doing this. I'm going to throw my potatoes in this side. But at this stage, I have some leftover chopped red onion and I'm going to toss it in. The poblano peppers, so I'm going to toss those in. And I've got three green onions that I've sliced, but I'm gonna wait to put those in until that cooks a little bit. I like to do it in stages. This is starting to get really crispy, so now I'm gonna add seasoning. I like to kind of hold up on the seasoning <clears throat> until the end part when I'm frying stuff like this. Because A, it has onions in it, so salt's gonna make it kind of um, get more wet. B, sometimes the seasonings burn. I'm gonna put a little bit of seasoning salt. And I'm going to do onion powder. I love onion powder with potatoes. It just makes a huge difference. And onion powder will burn. I'm going to put a little bit in, and then I will end up stirring it up. Black pepper. Salt. A little bit more salt. The seasoned salt is good, but it's... So we'll still and then at this point, I'm going to put in my green onions because I've turned the heat off. And I'm going to once again start tossing. Uh, everything mixed in well, all those seasonings. And that is what it looks like. Super delicious. I am gonna get some eggs fried up and I'm actually probably gonna slice up some um, Monterey Jack cheese and put it over the top. Okay, so here is the plate. Here's the hash. And here are the eggs going over the hash. And then I serve this with tomatoes avocados and then pickled jalapenos instead of toast we're serving these with um, a couple of tortillas that I heated up and then those are my <laughs> refried beans so he's not starving today <laughs> here it is I love this hash and I love regular hash, but I always keep potatoes or I have potatoes and corned beef canned up in my pantry. So whatever you like to use aside from those two things, depends on how you want to make it. And this is great for lunch or for dinner. We it, This night we had it for dinner. This was not breakfast. This was dinner. But pretty inexpensive. I served it with my homemade refried beans and I will link that in the description box below for you if you're interested in my canned refried bean mix.
but it's easy to pull one off the shelf and make refried beans really quickly. This next one, there's very few ingredients, but they are delicious. This is using my home canned pork in apple broth. And this is some pork pies. Pure deliciousness. Um, roast pork and spicy broth, and I'm gonna be using my home canned apple butter. First thing I'm gonna do is put a tablespoon of butter in my pan. The last tablespoon of butter on my butter dish. <laughs> and then I'm gonna add about half of a chopped onion. I'm gonna cook these just until they're translucent. All right, these guys are starting to get a little translucent. I'm gonna put in two cloves of garlic. Crush them right in. I'm gonna put in some fresh cracked black pepper. And some sea salt. And of course. If I need a little bit of the broth, I'll use, and I probably will use a tiny bit. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to put this on low. I don't really want to cook this. Actually, I'm going to turn it off. This doesn't need to be cooked. And we want our filling to cool off a little bit. I'm just going to smash the pork. No shredding. Oops. All right. I already have an open apple butter in the fridge, so I'm going to use about a quarter cup of apple butter. And normally when you make these pork pies, this is something you would cut up fresh apples for and then you would add um, cinnamon and nutmeg and clove. It's all in my apple butter. So I'm gonna use my apple butter, my canned apple. And then I'll use just a tiny bit of the liquid left over from absolutely love these pork pies and I have since started canning the pork in an apple broth when I will link that in the description box below for you as well you could use either pork for this so this apple butter will give it just enough sweetness and flavor if you want to use more apple butter than that you can use however much you would like there's my oven preheated I have preheated my oven to 350. I just want to taste this and make sure that there's enough apple flavor in here. Mm -mm -mm. That is so good. Now, um, I made this pie crust and just froze it. This is a double pie crust. Okay, so this pie crust I actually made with um, pork lard because I was making pork pies. but I made it ahead of time and froze it until I was ready. I am using my set of um, cookie cutter biscuit cutters. These are a set from France, so it says 80. <laughs> I'm not really sure what size 80 is, maybe four inches. Anyway, um, I will try to find them and put them in the description box below because these things, I will tell you, are amazing. They're plastic and they are sharp. Um, I love these. They are not metal, so they're not gonna rust. You know, sometimes those metal ones rust. These things are excellent. So I will uh, try to find a link for these for you and put them in the description box below because they work for everything that you have that you need circles cut out. <laughs> Now 
I'm just gonna cut a bunch of circles out and if I get too many out of here, I will find another use for them. One more out of there. And maybe one more up here. Maybe. Muffin tin. You want regular size muffin. You can do mini muffin if you want to do these for hors d'oeuvres, but I use it for dinners. Regular standard muffin size tin. My counter's not big enough. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just going to take all these rounds and I'm going to put them in here. You are going to have to push them up the side unless you use a bigger cutter. After you get these put together, you can totally put them in the refrigerator and refrigerate them until you're ready to bake them off. So I'm going to get the rest of these done and we'll be back. Okay, so I have my pie crust in here and it's not pretty. <laughs> I realized these were a little bit too small of rounds for my... Um, my tins and they were they only came up halfway so I used the scraps from the edge to just fill in the top it's okay it's going to be baked and you're not gonna see it but make sure you use a um, bigger cutter so I'm just gonna fill all of the wells with pork now this this is a really good fall recipe but you can always use any meat for this um, this this is a good idea for anything. You could make any meat pie this way. Change it up. You could do ground beef. That is a little Mexican oregano stick. <laughs> but you could do ground beef in here. You could do chicken. I mean, you can do any kind of ham pie you want. These are just little meat pies. So here's the last little bit. We're just going to top each of them with a pie crust. Just make sure you kind of tuck it in there. Okay. Here's my knife. I am going to put little vent holes in here. You can put however the vent holes however you want them. Okay, I'm going to put these in the freezer and I'm going to freeze them for about 15 to 20 minutes before I bake them off. I just want my pie crust to get cold again. And then I'm going to put them in a 375 degree oven for about 45 minutes. Um, I will time it though and let you know exactly how long it took. All right, so these guys are done. And they pop out super easy. hot nice golden crust these took 35 minutes I left them in for and 30 minutes probably would have been good okay I'm gonna try to cut through here for you I'm probably gonna make a huge mess Ooh, took the top right off But there is our delicious meat pie. It smells so good. It really smells like fall in here. Definitely make these around Thanksgiving. <laughs> this is a nice warm up pie. This crust is super crunchy. It's amazing. It's amazing what a little pork lard will do for your crust, right? <laughs> this is super delicious. You could serve this with some mashed potatoes. You could serve it with coleslaw, fried potatoes, mixed vegetables, salad. All right, so that is a huge compilation of budget-friendly homemade dinners that you're pulling from your pantry and your freezer with a few fresh ingredients. After all, we 
we hope we do have some fresh things whether you're gardening or the time of year that it is we can find good deals on things but making your crust homemade or your buns homemade really makes things budget friendly and they're not as difficult as you think I will link the pie crust recipe in the description box below for you and just remember that when you're doing the savory pork pies try to use lard if you've got it because it, a it's inexpensive B it really makes your pie crust better all right friends if you've hung in this long thank you so much for hanging out with me and I will see you in the next video